Welcome back to the Leashed Mind Podcast, Mental Health and Dog Training. I am your host, Mandy Bautel. On today's episode, if you're watching on YouTube, you're going to see things look a little differently. I have someone next to me in person versus on a screen like I usually do it. But the man himself that got me into this entire industry to begin with, because if it wasn't for my wonderful husband, Josh, I would not have even discovered the dog training industry, dog walking industry in general. So no other than my lovely husband, business partner and best friend, Josh Bautel. <laughs> Some of you may see him plenty from his business, DigiWolf. He is also part of Wolf Culture and how Wolf Culture even got started. But we'll get into all that fun stuff later. I really want people to kind of just understand your history, how you got into the dog training world, because I don't think a lot of people really know that. You're, you're the much more quiet half of the sure. business. <laughs> I would say you're more the listener and executor, and I'm more the talker and networker kind totally. of yeah yeah that's that's why Google we work person. yeah that's a nice way to see people please oh, no. <laughs> so babe how did you even like i i know a lot of people know how my career got started because of you and we'll get into that a little more later but where did yours even start yeah. i know it started from a young age yeah so professionally in 2009 so we moved to san francisco as a 19 year old going to community college got a job at sf puppy prep started dog walking from there before starting my own business i got into the dog world more say when i was probably 11 or so so veronica my aunt your aunt we had her yeah. with us Season one, episode two. Yeah. So she was the head of behavior um, at the SFSPCA um, in the early 2000s. And so I got to spend quite a few summers volunteering at the SPCA. So taking BART over from the East Bay to the SPCA in the city. As a kid. Getting to, uh, you know, help with uh, um, take notes for behavior evaluations, um, you know, hanging out with shelter dogs and whatnot. So I knew around that age I wanted to do something with dogs. Was um, it kind of just natural for you? Because I feel like yeah. that's why a lot of us get into it. You just If anyone has ever seen a dog around Josh, you kind of get it. They kind of just like naturally flow to you. Yeah. But yeah, it's like but, a natural calling. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So you were immersed in the behavior role, like from a young age then. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah I, I'd say sitting it was, in on behavior evals. Totally. I, I'd say for several years as a kid, I, I, you know, got into training, did some clicker training at that age and uh, then turned into a teenager for a few years <laughs> and definitely left it for a while, you know, to go play music and, and whatnot. But came back to it after, you know, moving to San Francisco, getting, getting that job and kind of kind of going from there. So how long were you at? So for those that don't know what SF Puppy Prep is, it's how would you describe it? Yeah, so Puppy Day School. Yeah. Yeah, puppy day school. So how long were you there before you decided to start our old business, City Pubs SF? Probably two years. So I mean, the the first six months as a puppy counselor. Um, so like actually in the uh, the day Take school care. program, and so working on play skills and whatnot, transferred over into dog walking. Probably did that for a year and a half before come becoming a contractor for puppy for puppy. them, and and then you know kind of was like I could do clients. this on my own thing. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 I feel like that's how a lot of dog walkers start off. Totally. And then you had that business for 10, 11 years? 11, 2011 through 20. So, 20. yeah. So, yeah. And, about that. Yeah. It's so impressive to be that young and just say, I'm going to go start my business. And just, yeah. I think that's why. So, you started City Pops in 2011. Is it? Okay. And so then I met you 2014 and I remember meeting you and just being like this, you had just turned 25. I was about to turn 24 and I was just like this 25 year old has his own successful business. He gets to be outside in nature all day and he gets to be with dogs all day. Like, and I was in a salon every day since I was 18. And I just remember being like, oh my God, no wonder this guy is so cool, collected and put together and has a good outlook when he gets to be in nature and with dogs all the time. I was so jealous. And I remember you took me on a dog walk when we first started dating. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I thought it was so fun. I'm like, you get to, people pay you to go and hike with dogs every day. And like, yes, there are so many like. Oh, it is a great job for We're 20s. so active. Yeah, yeah but like, but I, I 
there are so many like scary parts of being a dog walker. Oh, yeah. And we've had so many like crazy, great. We have crazy stories of being dog walkers. I'm sure we'll share those today. But I think just I remember that you were looking to hire a second employee and I was like, please, like just hire me. And we had only been dating like three or four months then. And I was like, no, I really think this could work. And I think I'm curious because we've never discussed this perspective. But I I remember there was a point where I was like, if he hires me, we got to take this seriously because you can't just hop into a new relationship and then work for someone. Like, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And so we need to right. take this seriously. And we need to like, if this is going to work, we have to approach our relationship differently because when you add work to a relationship, it changes the dynamic, especially when you were my boss. Yeah, for I'd say so. All intent. So I'm curious, like when you how you consider that, because I had to push quite a bit and I know a requirement was for me to do the dog walking academy. I don't know. Hard to to say, oh, I'm going to hire my new girlfriend and hope for work. Some amount of impulsivity, definitely. Um, But there's no right or wrong. No, (laughs) I think maybe I'm curious if it was like my willingness to learn and the openness of like, yeah, to embrace. I mean, I, I, I. I don't know. I had a good sense about you and like, I just, I just knew I want to say, but. The easy. That's the easy. No, answer. I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, it, from the outside that, that appears very impulsive and. We were very impulsive. We were yeah. Impulsive. But I mean, to some extent, like I, I had, I, I did have somewhat of a feeling about you, but in it, th- there's also committing to like things that you want to some extent too so i mean if you commit something to something then you commit to something so i don't know it's it's, it's, it's curious i think you and i have never really about. even discussed that because yeah. i feel like a, a question we get all the time is you know we've been together nine years married for six and i think with that we've grown together a lot yeah but i think one thing we always get asked is i think the easy way to deliver this question is like how do you guys do it how do you make it work because running a business, city pups, digital wolf, wolf culture, running three successful businesses together and not breaking up in that process and, and continuing to grow and do better and be successful. Yeah. It takes a lot of balance and counter- counterbalance and figuring out what each of us is good at and letting the other take over in what they're good at. Yeah. Which I think is, I mean, for any successful relationship, it takes that. But I think with business, it, it definitely puts a little more pressure on you to learn how to communicate with one another because you can't always, you got to remove some of the emotion there and, and some of the personal feelings and think of what's going to get yeah. us ahead yeah. successfully and grow. And I, I think we've had plenty of hiccups where it's like, it'll feel personal, but we need to remove that and think of more of how the business is going to be affected by certain things. Like we might disagree on how like to execute something, but we know it needs to be executed for the business. Does that make sense? I think so. Ish. Sure. Yes. I mean, that's my perspective. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I mean, we generally are the same person. I don't I mean, know. We are same brain. I think we just think very similar, but maybe that's just because we have ADHD. Maybe. If no one can tell, I'm the, clearly the more talkative one. And the relationship, but Josh is the listener. So I really want to ask how, I know how you came up with the idea, but I think the general public has never really heard us discuss this, but because Woof Culture was your idea. Woo, he gets all the credit for Woof Culture. I never came up with the idea. And so I'm just curious, like, I mean, I know the answer, but tell everyone else, like, how you decided on that because you delivered it to me so well when we were on a dog walk one day and i just i thought it was such a like pipe dream no i mean at that time i mean what year was that even 2018 no beginning of 2019 yeah well at at that time i was was like february or january 2019 yeah at that time i was i mean digiwoof was an idea before Woof Culture, and I was already doing some. It was around for a year by around then. that, as far as just like it being kind of a, a side thing and learning and getting applying the things to our own business. And at, at that point, I was learning a lot about advertising. Well, let's pop time out really quick because DigiWolf started before Wolf Culture because you spent so much time like creating the City Pups website, updating it yourself and learning how to do it that you were like, I do this. Well, I, I enjoyed that more than anything. You were good at it and it just, it was a natural, like you, you liked doing it. It was fun figuring it out. Yeah. And then you just decided to like lean into that. Like everything else you do, you just said. <laughs> 
that's what I love. Like you just decide something and you're like, let's just see where it goes. Yeah. And so you did digital for like a year to six months before. And then you were learning about ads. Right. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, it, it, I don't know how the idea really came. I remember like friends and other Walker friends and I always saying like, oh, it'd be so cool if it said this on a shirt. And I think you just were like, let's actually. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I was between advertising and getting my graphic design chops up and learning more about like marketing and niching down overall and whatnot. It kind of, I think the culmination of like experience within that learning all kind of, I don't know. Bundled up together. The right time, right place. Whatever. I still um, don't even know how you came up with the name. The you never explained how you came up with that. I don't know, like culture. I mean, around creating community and like culture and whatnot. The 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 purpose of the misspelling was specifically for uh, NCO. Really. Huh? So, like, you know how bands will uh, purposely misspell a word and whatnot, but that plays into being able to then be found with that specific spelling. So if we would have done boof culture, like typical spelling, it would have been, it wouldn't have popped up, been, well, as recognizable for one and then two from like that aspect. That's funny. I never knew that. Things you don't talk about when they... You do that. That that's funny. Well, and it stuck. It clearly worked. I mean, yeah. we're both wearing woof culture as we're talking about this. I always find that funny. Uh, that's interesting. I never. I don't know why I never asked you about them. And like, I don't know, there's. Uh, I thought about the band Waves. That it, How is it spelled? W a v v e s. So it's one we were listening to a lot at that time. That was. Oh, that's funny. That's interesting. Yes. So Josh has a bit of a past in in being in bands. You play bass, you play guitar, and you do. You do. And so, and we listen to a lot of like, I don't even know what that genre would be. But during that time, that makes sense though. You did that. That's interesting. Okay. So there's that. That's how Woop Culture got started. And then I remember that we just decided, like, I somehow I started managing it. And then you were like, here's my girlfriend that likes to be the attention. My, and, you were my, you were, was like, wait, we were married in, oh, no, we were married at that point. God, wow. I'm only, fuck. <laughs> here's my wife that likes being you know chatty and networking I didn't, you stepped in i didn't have to do it you just kind of stepped into it when it no but you were like do the social media yeah take the photos make the graphics do this. you set everything up and then you kind of just slowly went yeah i, I guess i kind of <laughs> prompt you to like let's go take pictures at the beach and just kind of having me model and But it was stuff fun. We were having start. fun yeah. with it. It wasn't what... I don't think no, we, we was, set... It we wasn't did, like... We didn't set goals. Like, yeah, it was just kind of like, a, let's see what happens. And Well, because I think I went in a little negatively because I was like, we're niching down so much. That I yeah. don't think it's going to turn into anything. I didn't... I severely underestimated how many dog professionals there are out there and how much they would like nerdy shirts that touched mm-hmm. on what they said. And now it turned into a whole community. It's interesting. I think when you go in not having so many grandiose expectations, you kind of open it up. Yeah, there were zero expectations. Like it was, I mean, it was a theory about like. It was a test. And at first it wasn't even about dog trainers. Even it was just. No, it was really pet. basic in the beginning. Like we made a pity party shirt that's as our first design. That did well for like two and a half, three years too. That was pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah, we did that and we did like a, it didn't sell. I don't think we ever released it. We did like a pugs, not drugs or something like that. We did a few very basic things. And I, like, I remember getting our first wolf culture sale. I was teaching a, a, a dog trading class. Cat and SPCA. Uh-huh. And that was all we really needed to get the motivation to like. And it was someone that we didn't know. That it was, was in like, it was because of an ad. Yeah. So. And I think, no, you're right. I remember because they tagged us. I was so shocked. And it was someone wearing like a click, click and treat t-shirt. And I was like, oh, okay, this is what you like. Yeah. Okay. And then we started making like reinforcement drives behavior. And then it just, it's, it's wild to think that far back. Yeah. So when I was like 
throwing t-shirts at all our dog walker friends trying to get photos of them <laughs> and just like tr- like hustling like crazy but yeah. still not thinking it was going to turn into anything and we were both i was walking full time training part time then i would come home and work on wolf culture in my spare time you were training full time you finally got out of walking mm-hmm. you're training full time training stepping training also, mm-hmm. and you were doing digital wolf. No, as, Here, a, as a hobby. Very, like, background work. Yeah, not work, the uh, paid work. No. It's just, it's the pivots that I find interesting. And a question I feel like that always comes up between us, and we bounce around a lot now that we're in a new state, in a new setting, and pandemic's over. Uh, would we ever get back to it? Maybe as, like, a retirement thing, maybe. I, I go back and forth sometimes, but I don't have the time. So that's all that. You know, the time to and train our I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like you should do one thing and one, do your, the thing well. And, well, and lean into what you're naturally. Well, yeah, what you're at. passionate about. And, but I don't know. I think there's something to be said about like honing in on your craft. And I think so. And I mean, it, I think it's cool that you kind of, both of us, we combined two passions and, and turned it into two different businesses. You with DigiWolf because you were always very passionate about graphic design and marketing and sales, and you kind of just cross them to each other because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, you should always go with what you're passionate about. I mean, I, I don't know, I pivoted to DigiWolf because I realized you slowly were starting to get burnt out of it. The training, yeah, well, like I noticed, I can I can it. learn about marketing and web design and whatnot as a entertainment whereas learning about dog behavior i that that always felt more school like work work so yeah that's how it felt for me too like like learning about it was fun and getting that knowledge was fun and i thought it was being always... able to apply it for me was more of the with the actual having to i don't know it, it depends a little bit so no, it's. I don't think we'd be where we are if we didn't have that start. And I think it's really helped us oh, yeah, in completely. aiding the professionals out there with that knowledge because we have that background that I think we can have a better understanding of how to better serve our yeah, no, clients. Completely. And I think they appreciate that we have that background and that we're not just someone coming in and like saying right. like, this is how you do your business. Do you want these shirts? When it's like... Yeah. No, I've done what you've done. I've I've been there. I've yeah. encountered the shitty clients you've encountered and I get it. I think that's what sets us apart and that people value that because we are part of the community and we, we care about the community. Even if we're not actively training, we're still very passionate and passionate about training in a specific way. Yeah. Yeah. Like, even always. I mean, yeah, I, can, I can't necessarily, I have a harder time nerding out on behavior overall, I'd say. But it glazes over when I talk about yeah. it occasionally. So. But if I were to talk to you about marketing, you'd get real jacked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we're, we're we're flowing here. So why not bring up some questions that I asked on Instagram stories a while back? Okay, so this is from Fearless Tales. Tasha asked, how do you prioritize time together and not think slash talk about work? Well, I'm going to burst that bubble right there and say that we it, talk about it work. It flows <laughs> in, yeah. That's all consuming. You know? I'll let you answer it first. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, it, it, this has definitely been a harder part, I think, it's especially. What do you mean by this? Um, this being a harder part? Like separating and prioritizing and whatnot. I mean. We're in a we, rebuilding. We, we work part. from home. Full time. Prior to the pandemic, it was easier to separate because there was, I mean, yeah, you have admin at home and whatnot and like an office day or whatnot. Um, but when you go see clients, you go see clients. And when you come home, you come home now. It's time. You know, work is behind that door. Um, but I'd say like when we were training, that definitely helped. I, I'd say it still came up in conversation to some extent. And I think I have, I've had a harder time than you of like not bringing work into every conversation, I'd say. So, I mean, there, there's, and, and increasingly I have to do it now too, but Saying, you like, created think, a monster. You need to stop talking about work. Like, so um, we, I, th- I think our saying is no more work talk. So I think that comes up at least like three times every date night. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Or like after work, we'll have to be like, 
or if it's something that we want to talk about and we know the other is willing to engage in it, that we'll be like, um, okay, I know no more work talk, but like I just have to say this one thing and then we can talk about it another time. It's like yeah. we just have to get it out and yeah. we're like, yeah. yeah. But yeah, you, you, you created a monster yeah. because I feel like when we first were together, I hated talking about work. Mm. And then all of a sudden, some little like switch turned on for me where I I don't know. You made me more ambitious, maybe. That's what it is. But, like, I've become into this, like, mini version of you. You rubbed off on me enough. <laughs> but, like, now I'm the overly ambitious one. And, like, I have this idea. Wait, do you want to do this? Like, I can't. And this idea just came up. And it's, like, if I don't get it out, it's not going to plant the seed. And so then I start talking about it. And then we'll be maybe, like... <laughs> 10, 20 minutes into the conversation and one of us will go, I'm sorry, but we need to stop. We need to stop. Yeah. Or you'll be like, okay, no more work talk. And I'll be like, I'm sorry. I said to get it out. But I think another thing is though, is that we're both anxious people to an extent. And so if we're able to minimize the anxiety by talking through something and just having like a, a game plan, yeah, then we're able to be like, okay, let's talk about it have an idea for when we are going to do work mm -hmm. and leave it there but at least we know the seeds planted and then we'll be like okay now let's have fun yeah. and then we'll have multiple conversations and it'll keep coming back up but i think we've trained ourselves to be like it's not work time yeah but i think i was saying that it's because we like talking about work though like i think that's a hefty part of our relationship and why this has worked so well because we like I don't know how to explain it. It's a way we bond. Like we like dumping ideas and like brainstorming and planning together and like. Yeah, I think we're both growth focused overall in life. So mm -hmm. well, I feel like that's like how I came to you with the podcast. I was like, we do all these things, but I want to do one more thing. Yeah. And I think it's just we, we do little side things it's here. Not, and there. It, it wasn't a one more thing. It's a. But it was a different it's a di outlet. It's a different outlet for your creativity. And yeah. Yeah. And so I, I think work always comes up. I think it's always going to. But I think we've learned how to navigate it in a way and say, okay, it's after six. Get the last bit of work talk you want to get in. And then we're not talking about it for the rest yeah. of the evening. Like and something we've been trying to do more lately. And it, I mean, we're, we haven't been. We're not perfect. Great at practicing it. But um planning personal time we're getting better yeah yeah so like i think it's because we notice we've been doing more work it's than play. easy to let work consume all time if you let it definitely so like planning on you know like putting it on our calendar or time blocking for like actually going to do stuff oh. or like having our list of like things like, like i have my whiteboard of like like personal go to, go to a go to a a music show or go to a comedy show is like things to check off for the year or as goals for example so. yeah and i think it's also yeah what you said like it's it takes time for sure and i think we've gotten to a lot of points of burnout and overwhelm and then having to think of how did we get here and how do we avoid this be hitting us it's hard so for example like i told you we were going to talk about this and i was like but Last week, you and I were really fucking burnt out. Mm -hmm. We both hit a wall. We didn't realize why. And we couldn't work. We couldn't focus. We were so scattered. Right? Like, is that how you describe it? Like, both of us. And I feel like that's that hasn't happened in a year or two where we've both been burnt out. Yeah. And I think both of us were just kind of like, instead of beating ourselves up about it, we actually leaned into it, which is rare especially for you, yeah. that we were just like, all right, let's give ourselves some grace. We're not doing so hot this week. Let's have a little more fun because clearly we need it. We're burnt out. And then we're going to come back stronger the next week. And we did. Mm -hmm. And it's not that we avoided responsibilities. It's just that we needed to prioritize some personal time in order to recharge to come back stronger for work. That makes sense? Yes. And so for us, that looked like Getting out in the middle of the day, going for a walk, going for a hike, going and getting breakfast, yeah. going and getting a drink and dinner and being out in our little town and not just try and force ourselves to work when we couldn't work because it was just getting worse. Yes. Like yeah. we both went in our separate offices for like five to 10 minutes, came back out to each other and we're like, I can't, I can't fucking do this right now. 
Yeah. And we have a fixer upper house. I, I share that all the time. And one thing we like to do is work on the house together. I think that shows that we're a great team. <laughs> we, we have all these businesses together. We like to work on our house together. But I think it's just we like problem solving together. Maybe yeah. that's what it is. Maybe. But I think just just finding those outlets and giving ourselves more grace, which is something we have had to train ourselves to work on. Yeah. Well, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I don't feel ashamed about having work on my mind. Like, it's something I'm passionate about. And it, like I said, it eases anxiety. Yeah. And it's it's exciting when you have something that you're passionate about that also can, you know, help with your income yeah. and life. Totally. And I think when you can turn your passion into a source of income, that's even better. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Um, another question, uh, this is from your pub life. Okay. Well, yeah, this, this kind of goes into the last one. Um, what boundaries do you have in place to prevent business from taking over your lives? Business is like, I don't know. <laughs> no, um, I don't know. I mean, I've gotten better about. You've gotten a lot better about like telling me to like not talk about work. No, well, not work. I don't know. I mean, sure. But I mean, I've gotten better about like stopping work at a certain time. That's true. You used to overwork a lot. Yeah. And just like putting the personal stuff in your calendar like you would work. And I think that's important. Something I need to get better at still. But. Well, and I think we help each other keep in check on that because yeah. you really, you got me to do the whiteboard. I thought it was stupid for the longest time. And then I realized how it really helped me organize my brain. Mm -hmm. And then I transferred the whiteboard over to my calendar to time block. And like, I actually have like a personal calendar and I have my personal time blocks and I like actually block it out and use it. It's taken me, you know, four years to do it, but I finally did it. Yeah. One thing we've done that I really like, and I think it's helped, is creating a list of like, so I've said multiple times, we both have ADHD. We both, <laughs> oh, the executive dysfunction really gets us hard, hard sometimes. Um, and we'll get to the point where we just can't make a decision and then we don't do anything. So We've made a point of making a list of things to do of just like, okay, here's a list. It, it can be something really relaxing. It can be something really exciting. Like one of the things we have is like one of those like skydive tunnels that you can do because we're not jumping out of a plane. That's terrifying, but <laughs> we'll do the other version. But it's just other things that we can say, what's on the list? What can we do? Pick it. And I think just having the choices already there visually for us to choose, it really helps yeah. us like find out things to do. And I think another thing as far as boundaries is we have our days off, but we do not, we might move them around you're better than i am you're right well you do look quite a bit more than i do you you pull you oversee the employees more and you're doing a lot more client meetings and stuff yeah. and calls but i mean our, we are committed to our days off when we have them and i think i've gotten better of saying like you need you need consecutive days off and i think we've also established that like Working on the house, chores, doing a bunch of things is not restful. It might fill our cups. That's why we got burnt out. Yeah. Because the weekend before we... Two weekends in a row. Oh, yeah. Two weekends in a row. We basically did Worked a big through. house project, like eight hours each day. Yeah. We didn't get days off. It felt like so. we worked full work weeks and then we went and did labor yeah. work. Um, and so that's how we... So after that happened, I think the burnout happened that we established, yeah. like, we can do... One of our days is a do something day. And then the other day off has to be recharging. And I have to tell you that last weekend because you kept trying to like do things. And I was like, you need to let your brain relax. Yeah. You don't need to do the things. And so I think that's one thing that's really important to me is finding a day of just like being a potato. That's what I told you too. I kept saying you need a potato day. You just need yeah. to be a potato or rot. I said you need a rot day. That's what it is. Um, We're working on it. I think we're learning. Okay. Got another question from bro let's go new jersey they said balancing your relationship needs dog needs and business needs how do we do it i think you're really good at the dog needs put it in your calendar i mean not everyone well, uses a calendar you should but, um you know like i have it i have my routines to some extent the routines change occasionally but me and fern have our morning walk which is beneficial for both of us so. 
that's in my calendar. And yeah, I feel like I can't even go on the morning walks with you because it's like that's your time to like clear your head before work. Well, no, because there yeah. there have been times where I'm like, so what do we want to do today? And blah, 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 blah. and you're just like, I'm trying to wake up my brain. I right. usually don't talk during this time, and so I've kind of let you guys have that time because I'm like, that's how he wakes up his noggin. <laughs> Relationship needs. I mean, yeah, just not talking about work all the time catching each other if one of us does start talking about work and not chastising each o- the other when we do mention work and just kind of you know being like okay like let's save the time to talk about this because yes. you know we and think we've developed really good roles of this is when i'm your business partner this is when i'm your spouse yeah. Because I have had times where you've come to me with work and it's like 7 p.m. And I'm like, I need my husband. I don't need my business partner right definitely. now. Like, I think that helps us. Quite a few years, definitely. That's any marriage, though, of learning like, oh, wait. <laughs> no, it we can't talk about like all super, the time. Yeah, definitely. No, and I think that's what got us to develop these skills because we did. Mm-hmm. I feel like the first couple of years of marriage, it was like, cool, we're, we're married. And, well, and we worked together before we got married, too. So that was already a... Yeah. I remember, like, we would go into, like, training sessions with clients. And, like, a lot of the times they didn't realize we were married. Well, yeah, so, we kept it really professional, I think. People yeah. didn't realize. Yeah. And then they'd be like, you guys have the same last name. Are you related? And Josh would go, oh, no, she's my wife. And, like, just then randomly touched me. And they'd be like, how... Does that work with like work and our thing was always you're the boss at work. I'm the boss at home. Yes. That was always our our slogan. And I think it worked. But I think now that we have different roles, I feel more equal to you. Yeah, you have your own. Yeah, you're. Because I think when we had City Pups, I still. That was my business before. Yeah. So now we. You know, culture is more or less your gig and did you have his kind of my and i think that there, there's crossover but like from a we respect each other decisions kind of yeah, yeah yeah and i mean you're kind of my boss with digital books and then i get your opinion for woo culture things yeah you're the deciding the deciders are all woo culture like i've thrown some ideas at you that you've shot down definitely so <laughs> say shot well just yeah i mean executive decision so yeah, I don't know. sometimes i i think it'd be fun to get back to training and doing that i think our agreement is like maybe in our 60s we'll get back to like dog walking or something oh yeah that was like yeah that's like end goal yeah that's 100 percent the best job i've ever had was dog walking i think so mentally physically emotionally not so much that was pretty traumatic that is a, yeah it's either the best job or you're sitting in your car like Sobbing and covered in sand and poop. dog poop. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, let's see here. Is there, because I think the whole reason I wanted to have you on the podcast was to have people, you know, see the side of us, get to know this side of digital food culture, but I think also see that you could successfully run a business with your spouse. Yeah. I think it just, like, people think, like, oh, I could have my. Yeah, you might not. It depends. I think just. I, I think we're both easy to compromise with. I don't know. I mean, or like we can work things out and like. I, that's a developed skill because we did not used to be easy to compromise with. I feel like I used to challenge you and like I was stubborn a lot of the time. I didn't like being told what to do. Yeah, but I mean, we, we both have a rational mind. So I don't know, just like being able to calmly communicate and. Well, I ended removing the relationship from the yeah. business because I think that's the skill we've really had to develop. Though. It's not about me personally. This is about work. Remove the like emotional attachment of how this could be personal and like really like just make this about work right now. Yeah, I don't think you fully can, but. To an ex- I think it's just it's it's a lot of uh, respecting each other and like being sure. Valuing the other's input. Yeah. Speaking time to get here. I think we're still learning a lot, sure. but I don't know. I think that you helped me a lot throughout my training journey, throughout developing wood culture, and and then getting into more of the role I have in digital of, of talking me through the imposter syndrome and and making me realize that like that's more of a superpower and something to like lean into. Thank you. Yeah, but. Because one thing I always admired, like from the time we started dating, was just you were very sure of yourself. Like I, I feel. Not. 
<laughs> but I feel like you never really let imposter syndrome take over. You never gave it much space to like when you do something, you do it and you're just sure of yourself. And I feel like that's something that I had to work to gain. Yeah, you just got to commit. I mean, well, because I think that's one thing we talk about a lot on the podcast is imposter syndrome and how debilitating it can be. And in, in yeah. just feeling like I'm not enough. I don't know enough. I'm not, I don't belong here. When it's like you're here, clearly you belong here. Yeah, you're I mean, I, I, and interested. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't know that I've ever. Because like even when you were a trainer and you were, I mean, deciding to get into Step Bank's training and then being on Milena's staff and getting into that, that's, I would have had big time imposter syndrome. Big yeah, time. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, it's a matter of, I don't know. I feel like I, I have, I've tried to not let my emotions impact that kind of stuff, but rather like see other people that are doing what I want to do and evaluating like what, what is the gap there? What do you mean by gap? From like it, you know, is it an education thing that I need to, to change? You know, or do I need to up my communication skills? Is it, you know, what, what is that? thing that i how do i get to where they're at yeah and then i don't know i mean if you've done the done the work that other people have done that are in a similar situation then I don't know if that was a full thought but... well i mean like for example like starting to do off and and deciding like yeah i, I guess i did have you... quite a bit of imposter syndrome with that and in, but... in deciding to just fully leave a career that you built and, and grew into yeah. essentially from I mean the time you were a kid yeah but I mean I, I did I did also want to do graphic design though like during no you've always been artistic well I mean you have yeah I, I mean I went to some college for design and web stuff so there's some experience there and then my dad is designer so um well and you were always doing like things for city pups and yeah you know he did youtube videos and i think you just kind of like it helped you narrow down to what you were better at and i think one thing that really stuck out to me when we would do consultations for walking and for training is you were always really good at the sales talk and and communicate well it was the communication and and providing value and helping people understand how to get to what their goals were and kind of delivering it in a way of here's how we get there this is how we're going to get there and like laying it out for them in a way that didn't feel unachievable and i feel like that's something you do now with Digital Wolf is helping pet pros feel less overwhelmed in automating, building, getting their business all fine-tuned to work for them. Because I think that's just, I don't know, maybe that wasn't a fully thought, thought, but I think it's just you are able to lay things out in a way that it feels approachable and achievable to people. Yeah, just got to break it down. That, oh, it's so easy. You just well, break mean, it down. I mean, whatever you can... You know, split hair splitting. Well, I mean, like just like with training, you split criteria and then make the things you're doing easy to digest and make sure you remember to reward yourself. Reward yourself. Make the things that you're doing like. So you've been training yourself this whole yeah, time. Like I mean, you have to perform, reinforce. So like it's funny how that always comes back. That like. You may not like talking about training and behavior and stuff anymore, but you it's part of all life. Yeah. All, all aspects of life is around things you're doing. It's the behaviors you're performing. So it's our environment, how it's impacting yeah. us. And I feel like that's something you really taught me of like, like the whiteboard that yeah. is essentially training myself in incremental. Yeah. That check yeah. at the end of the, you know, getting something done can and be really. It though. Yeah. Because doing the. You were having a hard time with like you had it just as year, quarter, month, week. But then splitting it down the week down to days. I didn't do month. That's what it was. Oh, yeah. That's where my my like yeah. sticky part was is because I um I had the year, I had the quarter, and then it was what I'd work on that week. Mm -hmm. But like I didn't know what I should be working on for the month in mm -hmm. the quarter. And that's where like everything got jumbled up and I couldn't split it enough. And then you told me to put month and then I realized how to really break it down. Mm -hmm. And I realized I need a lot of splitting. I am that dog that needs you to really give me small chunks of the behavior in order for me to get fit, which mm -hmm. I never realized. You've been training me this whole time. Oh, my God. It's There's small bits of cheese and you just... It's more like buying me a book every time. No. I feel like. 
Well, okay. Is there any advice that you have for anyone that is maybe getting started, feeling stuck, whether they are doing this on their own or with a business partner? Huh? What would you say to younger Josh when he was feeling overwhelmed and just trying to get started? Hmm. Or what was one piece of advice that was helpful for you, maybe, when you were feeling overwhelmed? Slow down. Like it's not all going to get done today. Encourage. You are the one person that is like, I want to make a course. I'm going to do it all today. You try to do it fast. You give that okay. advice. You do it fast. Well, I mean, it depends. You don't so, I mean, like it. They're, they're short. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I don't know. I mean, if I could remind myself every day to slow down and like, uh, as long as you're working towards something, then and you keep that in the front of your mind. I think it's a lot of us. It's hard to stay motivated and stay on track if we're not seeing results fast enough. And I think that's something we've struggled with in the yeah, past. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I mean, a uh, um, book that I think really helped in like the last year or two was uh, was that was it what, the one thing? Okay, really, you'd yeah. recommend that too. Well, because I recommend that plenty on here. Is that, um, and then the one by Don, uh, the one that we always recommends. Do you have it on audiobook? Do you want to look? Because I feel like it's always good to share books that we've learned from. The one thing I work, I fucking, it's such a small read, but it's such a, it. Well, it, I think that that's the one where I it, it kind of came up break it down. Down with the, uh, the whiteboard, whiteboard, like, you know, what are the things that. What are the things that you can accomplish a little bit each day that will work towards your bigger goal. Right. Like you, you have your, everything you do should be working towards, working towards that. And so then being able to. I think that's why I felt scattered for so long is because I didn't know how to break down the steps in order to work towards my bigger goals. So then I wasn't really, I was successful, but I don't think I was really setting goals for myself to accomplish. And I think having those, whatever they may be, personal or business, I think having that helps you stay on track. Yeah. You have so many books. Yeah, I don't know. Was it the... No. Oh, no, it was Michael Hyatt. Your best year ever? Might be that one. It's one of Michael Hyatt books. Michael Hyatt? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that, that, I think that might have been the one that you've like listened to like a few times. No, I only listened to it once. But it, it it's along the same lines as the one thing. Yeah. Just a different different flavor. Different. <laughs> so No, I remember you said that to me when you first listened to it. You're like, I think you'd really benefit from it. And I kind of rolled my eyes at you for a bit. Yeah. And then I actually read it and the light bulbs turned on. Yeah. And everyone I have recommended that book to has had the same response. And I feel like when people read that book, then they understand why we do the whiteboards that we do and stuff. Yeah. And it's hacking our brain. Yeah. All right. Well, it's been so fun having you on the podcast and talking with you about this. Yeah, this is so I feel like we never like take the time to talk like this about work, so we do every day. All good. I think not really piecing through our journey actually and appreciating it. Yeah, yeah. Looking backwards, I guess is a little hard. I think it's overwhelming to acknowledge all the growth. Yeah. Well, I mean it's so easy to just be future focused that you don't notice the like yeah. journey. It really is actually fun to reflect. Okay. Well, I, I do want to have you on for another episode because I think it'd be important to talk to folks about setting up and automating their business in a way that can prioritize their mental health. Sure. That's kind of why you've done your whole software class. Yeah. How it's gotten there. And so maybe we can talk about that in another episode. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. I love you. Love you too. Thank you guys for joining us on this episode and we will be back with another one. And if you like what we're doing here on the Leashed Mind podcast and you want to help others find us, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media, give us a rating wherever you got your podcasts, whether that's leaving a review on Apple or giving us a star rating on Spotify or just leaving a little R plus on our Facebook page. It's all appreciated. Thank you. And we will be back with another episode.